So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh! Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the Barbecue Central Show. The show where we talk about all things that are important in the world of barbecue. From big name interviews with competitors on the barbecue circuit, grill manufacturers and pit makers, to advice on cooking brisket and ribs. You'll find it all right here on the Barbecue Central Show. Your host, Greg Rempe, is a backyard barbecue and grilling fanatic and loves to talk about his passion, which many of us share together. You can learn more about barbecue and grilling by visiting the website the bbqcentral.com now let's get in the smoke here's your program host greg rempe hey what's up everybody a very good tuesday evening to you and welcome to a, another edition of the barbecue central show yeah it's the show that talks about all things important to the world of barbecue and grilling central lights how's your life you have tuned into a great show, I promise you, tonight. Jam packed, full of great interviews, information, and what have you. Tom Foolery. Contact information in case you want to get in touch with the show right off the top. You can call in toll free at 877 448 You can also email the show if you would like to. BBQ Central Radio at gmail.com. Those numbers and email addresses again, 877 448 BBQ Central Radio at gmail. Com. And here's what's happening on the show tonight coming up in about 13 minutes from now. Segment number two, known affectionately as, I will be joined by a new Pitmaster host. Well, let's try that again. I'll be joined by a new host of Barbecue Pitmasters for season two, Kevin Roberts. Many of you know that he has been receiving less than positive criticism about his new gig as host of Barbecue Pitmasters, mostly on the heels of what many would consider to be a failure of sorts in the Memorial Day appearance that he made on the Today Show where he had mentioned about boiling ribs and beer and he had really over mustered a rack of ribs and also mentioned that you could cook a rack of ribs raw to its cook state in 40 minutes at 225 degrees. So needless to say, kind of drew the ire of many of the barbecue fanatics and purists out there. So we'll talk to Kevin. Get his thoughts on exactly how that segment went down. But look, I mean, it's kind of almost been beaten to death. And, of course, after I have my interview and I hear subsequent interviews, I can say, look, that horse has been beaten to death. It's not beaten to death yet until I can actually get a hold of Kevin. And then, uh, subsequent to this interview, anybody else that does anything with him, they're just beating a dead horse. Because you got to come here first to own up and, and we got to see what's happening in that mind of yours. So look for Kevin. And, again, I'm not going to sit here and beat him about the head, neck, and chest. It's not really what this show is about. I would like to get, obviously, I'm going to ask some of those questions that you want to hear and see how he answers if he tries to just go ahead straight forward with it and kind of own up to maybe not being a barbecue pit master of sorts and seeing what he is good at and ultimately, and more importantly, perhaps, what he feels that he's actually going to be able to bring to the show. Because I think we can all agree that while there's a decent majority of the barbecue and grilling fanatical base, fan base, if you will, that is a little dismayed that the format has been completely revamped more or less, you still want to see the show do good. Everybody seems to like John Marcus as an executive producer. Everybody knows that he is a barbecue guy through and through and was trying to get this sport out there to the general public. So I think all of us, whether we want to admit it in public or not, want to see season two of Barbecue Pitmasters do well. Plus, there's going to be some people that we know maybe personally or we've seen throughout barbecue forums or we've taken classes with that are going to be appearing on the show as well as the season rolls on. So lots of good things and, and hopefully lots of positive things coming out. So look for Kevin Roberts, 14 past the hour, 34 past in the third segment. will be joined by regular monthly guest Derek Riches of About.com. He has one of the coolest jobs ever, and he will, of course, be making an appearance to tell us what's new and cool out there. Before we spend our hard-earned cash, he'll kind of give us his thoughts about some of the cool items out there in the retail market for the consumers to buy. Four segment free for all. We're going to be giving away a barbecue hook donated by bbqhooks.com. Thanks to Marsha Fox for that. Also, we have a new prize giveaway coming in from the Santa Barbara Spice Company vis-a-vis Richard Fuller. He's going to be giving away, and over the next couple months, a bottle of El Captain Santa Maria-style seasoning. And I have had El Captain. I've been actually using El Captain for quite some time now. It is a fabulous seasoning. Not only is it 
Very good on traditional Santa Maria style tri tip beef. Very good on vegetables, steak. It, it's really in a very good season all, if you will. So that's going to be up for grabs in the four segment free for all as well. And Cosmos Q injection pack. So those three prizes definitely up. So if you're looking to talk to a post mortem Hall of Fame broadcaster and Harry Carey answer barbecue questions or not barbecue questions, you are certainly going to want to tune in and more importantly, call in and take uh, take part. It's fun. You get to answer three questions of relative ease, five qu- five seconds to answer each question when asked. He's uh, you know explained the rules to me, so I'm fairly diligent and up to speed on what happens in the four-segment free-for-all. That's my break before I head up After Dark. Speaking of After Dark, we're going to be joined by... Also monthly guest, Canadian barbecue and grilling star, author of Plenty, an overall great guy, and uh, world record holder of the largest hamburger ever made on the face of the earth, Ted Reeder, is going to be joining us. Obviously, we have the July 4th holiday rapidly approaching here. I believe it's going to be Sunday, if uh, memory serves me correctly, if my calendar is correct. I believe it's going to be Sunday. So, I mean, why not get some tips and tricks and perhaps some great recipes? And Look, if you're a fan of the show, You know that Ted is one of my all-time favorite recurring guests. He's very anecdotal. He has a lot of great recipes just by his books. You can see the guy is very well accomplished. He's an accomplished chef. He's done a lot of things within the culinary world, not just specific to barbecue and grilling, but lots of different things in the business of barbecue, in the business of grilling, and in the culinary world in general. So he's always a great guest to have on. But Ted is really a guy that you'd probably want to throw six or nine beers with, get in his backyard, see those 148,000 smokers and grills that he has, and let him just fix you some ludicrous burgers or better butter burgers or whatever it is and take shots of Jack Daniels and eat plank Twinkies for crying out loud. So look for Ted Reeder coming up in the first part of After Dark, which is going to be right around 5 after 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And then wrapping up the second portion of After Dark, You would remember last show I had mentioned that there was a very unique barbecue competition, and that just wrapped up this past weekend in the nation's capital of Washington, D.C., the Washington, D.C. barbecue battle where they cook both a Kansas City barbecue style and a Memphis in May, I'm sorry, a Memphis barbecue network style back-to-back. And teams have the option of cooking in both. They don't have to, of course. But uh, many of the teams that cook KCBS also turned it around and cook MBN. And vice versa, a lot of the teams that cook MBN turn it around and cook KCBS. You'll be happy to know that a very esteemed friend of the show, Yazoo's Delta Q, won the Memphis Barbecue Network side of things. And q won the KCBS portion. And my uh, ever diligent and ready Barbecue Central Show correspondent, Kelly Dodd, got a lot of great interviews. I believe we have six or seven on hand from some of the top teams out there getting their thoughts about how the event went. And she actually was able to chase down the winner of both the KCBS side and the Memphis Barbecue Network side of things as well. So we have some kind of a post-winning reaction as well. So Kelly doing a very good job. If you don't know who Kelly is, she has a very uh, passionate interest about becoming some type of broadcast journalist. She's only in high school right now. I believe she's uh, like a sophomore or junior. And we're going to get her on the phone tonight, kind of get her uh, five-cent rundown of how it went for her and what kind of she felt how the competition went and then of course we'll go to our sound bites so uh, that's what we have going on kevin roberts coming up next Derek riches after that four segment free for all to wrap up the first hour and then during the second hour ted reader and the reports from kelly dodd from the dc barbecue battle doesn't get any better than that but here's well uh, here's something that gets better the fact that the ribolator is still on sale for crying out loud look Don't fall for the trick of where you just buy the standard spit rod and motor and then you're relegated to just the bigger cuts of meat like a roast or a chicken. Get something that gives you that ability to become Mr. Imagination. How about a four-wheel, a four-tray Ferris wheel rotisserie unit where you can cut chicken on one level and steak on another and burgers on another and hot dogs on another? Dare I say succulent fish? What? Yeah, you can do it, and it fits on your gas grill. If you have a kettle-style grill, you have the extender ring to make it available for those types of grills, too. It's $89.95 for your gas grill. If you don't have anything and you have a kettle grill, you can get the spit rod, the motor, the ribolator, and the extended ring for $240. You can't beat it. Ribolator.com is the website to check it out. Lost my mind. Ribolator.com will come back with Kevin Roberts. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Radio Networks.
Barbecue fans travel from all over the country and the world to learn the secrets of real pit barbecue from grand champion pit master Conrad Haskins. Now take your skills to the next level with a Barbecue Institute pit master class. You'll learn how to make sauces, rubs, and smoke mouth-watering barbecue every time you cook. Your new skills will impress friends and family. Internet forums, blogs, and Facebook are full of success stories from our graduates. Upcoming classes locations include Rock City Rib Fest, Rochester, New York, Lexington, Massachusetts, Lang Factory Test Kitchen in Georgia, Fort Worth, Texas, Fredericksburg, Texas, Houston, Texas, Monroe, Washington, and Kennewick, Washington. For more information, class dates, and contests we'll be competing in, visit www.bbqclass.com. That's bbqclass.com. Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. Welcome back. About 14 past the hour. This portion of the show brought to you by D-Dogs Barbecue Rub. Now offering free shipping on all orders by visiting the website ddogsbbq.com. They also have two new products to choose from. The Texas-style barbecue sauce and a jalapeno rib glaze. Tasty on the tongue. Oh, did I mention everything you buy over D-Dogs Barbecue Rub right now is free shipping? Head over and get some today. As a matter of fact, get extra. Why not? It's fun and it's free. Ddogsbbq.com. You'll be glad you did. As we all mind, uh, as we all know by now, D Dog's barbecue rub is better than ketchup, baby. All right, Central Lights. As we all know from the interview I did last week with John Marcus, Barbecue Pitmasters is going with a complete overhaul on the format side this season, season two. And on top of the teams, there is a host to facilitate the events, and he happens to be my next guest. He's a very accomplished chef, very successful restaurant tour. He's made several TV appearances and also does a college circuit tour as well. So let's go ahead and jump over to the hotline. Joining me now, new host of Pitmaster Season 2, it's Kevin Roberts. Kevin, how are you tonight, buddy? Greg, <laughs> and of course, no, I know nothing about barbecue. <laughs> are, are, you pre, are, you, uh, are you doing the preemptive strike? Dude, uh, let, me, let me tell you something. We filmed our first episode. I almost got killed by John and Myron Mixon already. <laughs> I mean, geez, I give one option out of like six years of doing this. One option. You know what's so funny, though? Six years ago, I did this, and I was talking about doing mustard on my ribs back in the day. No one was doing it back in the day. Yeah. And people would look at me like I'm insane. <laughs> now I go on like, websites and stuff, and everybody's like, doing almost like a pre-wet like wet rub with mustard. I'm like, oh, geez. Yeah. So uh, I'm hoping in five to six years someone wants to boil a rib. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I got, dude, I, I just got killed. I got killed last week on set. All right, so let me, let me just do this. Well, you know, I have to ask this question because obviously I'm representing the fanatical barbecue fan base, uh, and, and especially since most of that uh, fan base was fans of how the format was of season one. Uh, but, you know, the question obviously everybody wants to know is you go ahead, you do that segment on the Today Show Memorial Day, and you had mentioned obviously about the boiling of the ribs. Uh, you know, I'm not so much uh, a non-believer myself of the yellow mustard. Maybe some people might have thought you put a lot of yellow mustard on it, but certainly a lot of people, as you said, using yellow mustard as a rub adherent. Uh, the other thing that people seem to take issue is with the fact that you said you could cook a rack of ribs in 40 minutes at like 225 degrees. Uh, so, right. I mean, you, you've kind of drawn the ire from some of the uh, the fanaticals. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, is, is it more of a thing where, look, lesson learned, you just keep moving, doing what you're doing? Or is are some of you like, man, you know, who the hell are you? Look what I'm doing. No, 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 dude! I am such a huge barbecue fan. You know, right off the top, I, I first of all, I've never said I'm a barbecue master. I'm not, you know, I'm not entering these contests. <laughs> now, I've been to Memphis and May the last five years in a row. So I was there when Myron actually won. I think 2007. Um, you know, I, I I've actually judged some some barbecue. I, I know obviously flavor profiles. You know. Uh, tenderness, presentation, I know all that fun stuff. I actually did the Cleveland um, Barbecue Fest last year. I've judged that with a few other people. So I am familiar with barbecue. I'm, a huge, I'm more of a fan than anything. Um, but uh, you, what happens is with these type of morning shows, especially like the Today Show, is you've got to remember it's going, the recipe is going from me to my PR people who tweak it, right. who go, that go to the Today Show. And the Today Show have their own stylist. She's actually a really cool chick. 
then she tweaks it, you know, t- t- says what we can and can't do. <laughs> then, then we have this crazy rehearsal where literally I'm not allowed to make my own fire on the Today Show. They have a fire person that, tell, that, that basically lays down law of what I can and can't do. So I'm like, indirect heat, direct heat. Of course, I'm always indirect heat type of guy. You, if you do remember the, 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 the segment, I, do, I did say slow and low, which yep. I'm a big fan of. Right. But what happened was, what happened, got, it got lost in translation with the recipe, yes. If you do boil your ribs, then the, the temperature at, at well, I think I said 2, 210, 220 would be for that, for that amount of time. But it got such loss in translation. And also, too, remember the, 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 the episode hook was quick shortcuts for making a memorial barbecue. So I, it's, it's almost like I, I threw that out there just to kind of appease, you know? And uh, it's so funny because like, I didn't think in a million years because actually boiling your ribs is a huge West Coast thing. And there's actually restaurants, big, actually rib restaurants that do that on the West Coast. So, you know, unfortunately, I'm not from the barbecue meccas of the world. I'm actually, from, unfortunately, from Los Angeles, uh, which, thank God, I escaped and, uh, you know, lived, I moved down to San Diego. But uh, so, yeah, so it's totally my bad. Uh, but, you know, there are people out there actually, surprisingly enough, boiling their ribs. Thank God I just said it's an option. I personally don't do it, but. Whatever. Yeah, Kevin Roberts. What do you think, Greg? Yeah, I mean, Kevin <laughs> Roberts joining us here is going to be the uh, well, he he is the host of season two of Barbecue Pitmasters. So here's my uh, quick take, and the Not fact after is, this interview. Oh no, absolutely, you are. You can't. I'll be you fired can't deny. right after this. Negative. I'll, I'll, I'm in okay. good with John Marcus. You're okay, buddy. Uh, no, no. You know what, John, John and Myron are great guys, and you know the judges on the show now, right? Warren Sapp oh, yeah. and yeah, Art yeah. Smith. Right. So uh, yeah, it, it, it's 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 actually going to be a pretty kick-ass show. It's going to be pretty cool, man. So so uh, well, even though you got Knucklehead Kevin on there, it, it's still going to be a pretty good show. <laughs> so here's my take on the boiling ribs: is I've always and I've known obviously people that have boiled ribs get it done quicker. Uh, my mother-in-law is actually a fairly big believer in parboiling oh, uh, chicken. Alive? You guys didn't kill her? <laughs> uh, we, well, we haven't been talking in like ten years, but that's a different story for a different day. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I've always been told, uh, especially by some of the more barbecue uh, elite, that when you boil a rib. You're actually boiling out the fat, which to a lot of the barbecue people means boiling out the flavor. So I can certainly understand where if you're pressed on time or you want to do it quick, and it sounds like you have friends that are very short on time, very short on attention span, and want beer and food ASAFP, which I can certainly uh, respect and appreciate. But to me, to put in the time and you do the low and slow, as you said, and it, it comes out a, a nice succulent smoky bone, which I'm sure, as you said, you've enjoyed at a bunch of different competitions and, and other events that you've been at. So that's, that's the only way to do it, to get that nice, what, that pink smoke ring, I guess you guys call it. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously, I mean, that's the golden rule, of course. But as I mentioned, you know, my friends get angry at me. And that's, um, you know, and, 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 and you're absolutely right about that. It does boil out, it renders out the fat, boils out the fat. Um, and that's actually a big West Coast thing, too, is, you know, kind of making a healthier option. I still want my rib, but I want kind of a healthier version of it. Um, and so that's kind of how, where that kind of technique came in, too, um, or why they do it, I'm sure, on the West Coast. Um, obviously, slow and low, the longer the better, obviously, obviously. But uh, as I said, uh, you know, if I get up at, you know, 10 o'clock, watch, I'll start watching the game, my buddies are over by noon, the game starts at one. If, if the food's not out by one, I'm getting just hell. I mean, <laughs> so I'm like in this kind of quandary of like getting, you know, good food out quick, really. So that's why I don't, bar- that's why I don't barbecue for my friends anymore. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I think probably where the biggest, uh, the biggest downfall is the fact that if, you, if, if Kevin Roberts just would have came on as, you know, the food guy doing some quick munchies and that's it. I don't think any of this even becomes an issue. And the, right. the unfortunate fact, well, not unfortunate for you because you're the host, but unfortunately you're introduced as host of Barbecue Pitmasters. You turn around and do a barbecue segment, uh, more or less, and then all these people that are fanatical about it see it and are like, oh, my God, we can't right. believe it. What is this guy hosting? Blah, blah, blah. But nonetheless, I mean, we can only, we can only beat that horse, and obviously you're, you're manning up and saying what you're good at and, and what you're a fan of. And, Absolutely. I mean, yeah, and I, as I said, I've already gotten beaten up by John and uh, Myron, so it's like, you know, just I, 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 you know, I can take it all now. So those two chased me around the set for about four <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, nothing like uh, some coworkers trying to beat you up. But yeah. all right, yeah. so, first day on the job, I already get want to get murdered. Perfect. Yeah, exactly. So all right, so, so let's uh, let's skate away from that for now. Um, for the people that maybe aren't as familiar with Kevin Roberts, why don't you give us a little brief background about you and kind of what you're into aside from uh, you know the TV hosting stuff? Yeah. 
Uh, well, you know, basically, I grew up actually in a single family home. Uh, I grew up with my mom and my grandma raised me, and they actually ran restaurants back when I was a kid. So I actually started cooking when I was eight. And that's kind of how I got, you know, the kind of the, the cooking chops, you know, um, you know, I, unfortunately, a lot was trial and error, we could never kind of afford to, to put me into cooking school. So Nana was sh- showing me how to chop, showing me how to how, how to actually farm, we, ha- we actually have a farm. Uh, I'm actually I just I'm planting a bunch of stuff right now. We actually have a Meyer lemon tree. We've got a persimmon tree. We've got a fig tree. We've got my grandma only she does homemade apple pies. She's actually from Missouri. Wow. And so we literally have a tree designated. It's called baking apple tree that she only uses for her apple pies. My grandma, by the way, just turned 93. Wow. So uh, so if anything, blame those women. <laughs> so I'm a little sensitive too, Greg, by the way, growing up with women. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't have a father taking me in the backyard saying, hey, Kev, this is the way, real way, way to, you know, kind of barbecue, unfortunately. So, uh, so that, and then I, I took actually health and nutrition in college and then wrote my first cookbook, um, Munchies, uh, in 2004. So I've been, I've been doing this, this game for about, what, six years now. And, and basically it's all kind of quick, simple, tasty, healthy recipes for young adults. I think getting kids and young adults back in the kitchen, kitchen and cooking, especially with our you know, fast food society now, yeah. uh, is, is, is become a real problem. And so that's kind of my hook. You know? And then my second book, Kissing in the Kitchen, came out, uh, which is just basically if you have a hot date or you're, you know, you're married or your girlfriend or, you just, or your boyfriend, you just want to kind of want to impress them. And so that's the second book is kind of bringing romance back into the kitchen. So that's what I'm about. You know, obviously I'm still a big fan of barbecue. I love barbecue. Uh, I'm eating a lot of barbecue lately. Um, but my, my, my thing comes from more of, uh, you know, growing up in the restaurant business, growing up uh, with my mom and grandma and, 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 you know, cooking from those kind of skills. Kevin Roberts joining us here on the barbecue central show. All right. So Kevin, you were on uh, like next food or food TV network star, or, you know, whatever that show was, <laughs> uh, Greg, we call that the next food network loser. Well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, I, I didn't want to, like, you know, give the industry insider title out to all the centralites, but since you let the cat out of the bag, that's what we call it. Um, yeah, uh, it, it, that was that was that was painful. Well, I mean, you know, what are you going to do? This is this is reality television. But obviously, I mean, you have a there's no doubt about it. I mean, you come off well, you have a charisma, you have the ability to talk. Obviously, that's going to translate into something like this where you're going to be in front of a camera. So in this type of realm where you have a a fairly drastic format change from a season one where they're following competition cooks around, seeing what they do to something like this where they're setting it up as a challenge. And now you're kind of stuck in the middle to be a facilitator between what the judges are looking for and what the competition people are doing and trying to tie, tie that all in. What do you feel your best characteristics are bringing to the table uh, that makes Kevin Roberts the right choice for the show? Well, first of all, Greg, you're absolutely right. Season one was is the, the format I like in TV shows is that run and gun, cameras on people in the heat of the moment. I love that style of, of TV personally, especially with barbecuing. You know, then you get the, the kind of the real flavor of not only the food but the people. Um, this show now, this season's way more structured, um, and that's where they, that's where I come in. Basically, you still got the Myron Mixons in there. You you still got you, get, you still got the banter. You still got people talking crap. I don't know if I can say the S word. We're not regulated. Um, <laughs> can I or no? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, so yeah, you got people talking shit like you know all barbecuers do. You know, that's what's great about, uh, you know, barbecue and barbecuers and hanging out is the banter and, and kind of people <laughs> bring it, bringing up all kinds of fun stuff. That's right. Um, I'm literally just weaving the story. You know, I'm basically the Ryan Seacrest, except uh, I don't have frost in my hair and I actually uh, can cook. <laughs> but, you know, to, to, you know, I'm the one kind of, you know, kind of just weaving the story through, you know, especially with the, the rules and stuff of, of this way, this one, because because it, it is a competition now and it is 400 grand. And so there, you can't really mess with that now, but you're still going to get that old school flavor of the first season for sure. You're going to get that edginess, but it's just going to be more controlled. Uh, you started taping some of the shows. I had John Marcus on last week, and I think they were starting uh, taping Wednesday of last week. Exactly. And, you know, now that you have some things underneath your belt, and obviously I'm not looking for anything that's going to get you in trouble or, you know, something that's <laughs> oh, kind of classified. Trouble here. <laughs> but look, I mean, this is the Barbecue Central radio show, the hottest thing on the internet and across the globe. I mean, in your mind, in your expert opinion as the host, how's it coming across from your perspective, better, worse, or about what you thought? 
I think for first episode, it, it, it's pretty good. Remember, it's all in the editing now. You know, they've got, they've got a lot of cameras rolling at, you know, on, on everybody all at once. And it's, so it really comes down to edit, editing these days. Um, you're, it's, it's definitely still up in your face kind of stuff, you know, the style of first season. You know, it's right there. It's in the thick of it. They're, you know, you're watching these teams or these people, you know, go at it. You're seeing what, the, you know, the proteins are throwing on. You're seeing them, how they're cooked. You're seeing, you know, that whole, that whole technique on that. You're seeing the presentation of it. You're, see, you're seeing it through. Um, so I, in, in that regard, it's definitely right on. Uh, but now, we, of course, with the judging, you know, that, that brings a whole other kind of element into it, you know. And then, and then you know, you get some, some shit talking, you know. You get some, some judges that aren't uh, either happy or, t- you know, not too happy or happy with, uh, you know, with the, with the, the, the end result. So you're going to have that, that kind of dynamic. And then I'm just basically kind of setting everything up and, and uh, weaving, you know, just, you know, telling the story, basically. So, so it kind of have a, has – and remember, too, I'm also coming from a viewership point of view, too, now. So I'm asking those kind of questions on, you know, the, the, you know, the barbecue terminology that a lot of people don't know that still love barbecuing and still love grilling and still love, you know, watching the show, but we're like going, what, well, what does that mean? Wait, there's no kind of payoff on that. So I'm, I'm bringing that to the table of like, hey, this is what this means. I'm simplifying it. I'm the simple, simple guy. I'm the simpleton of the show. Simpleton basically. of the show. Kevin Roberts joining us. I'm the simpleton us. of the show, basically, yeah. <laughs> now, I mean, you have a lot of experience within television, working on camera, being on some of these shows. And you always hear about, and you mentioned it here briefly just a second ago, about the editing and, and how it's all in editing stages and in the editor's hands and what they're going to do with it. I mean, can they really make you look like an a-hole or make you look like you don't know what you're doing in order to build you a certain way to the audience, depending on how, the, how all that's tracking? It, it depends on the show and the network. I don't think TLC would do anything like that. I'm actually, you know, coming from the Food Network um, and, and bouncing over TLC. Um, I, I, I personally think TLC is a great company and great network to work for. I don't think there's going to be any bad intentions there. I think it's all going to be played out on camera. So whatever the contestants or the, the barbecuers say to the judges and back and forth and all that kind of interaction, it's all real. You know, it's all on camera. So you can't really fake or manipulate what's already been said or done. You know what I mean? So if, say, somebody's just a complete knucklehead, it's going to come out because if they're being a knucklehead on camera, it's going to come out, you know, as them being a knucklehead. You know, so I don't, you know, it, there's no way to really manipulate live on air footage, you know? There you go. All right. So uh, this is a Kevin Roberts. He is the new host of the Barbecue Pitmaster <laughs> show coming on season two. Uh, Kevin, before I let you go, and I know I'm keeping you over here, um, and uh, hopefully Miss Stern won't uh, ream me out when she talks to me after she gets back in town next week, but uh, you, you also do this college tour thing, and I don't know if a lot of people are really down with what that's all about, but kind of give us a, a quick synopsis of what that's all about. It's basically from, from, from where I came from, from the uh, kinesiology nutrition background in college, was uh, basically just kind of keeping... Uh, um, and the Munchies Cookbook is basically just uh, getting college students and young adults back in the kitchen and cooking again. Uh, I talk a lot about breakfast, obviously the most important meal of the day because it stimulates your, Greg? Metabolism, of course. Yay! See, there we go. So, you know, then, you know but that, that's basically the hook of the program is, is um, the big thing with uh, colleges now is called the Freshman 15. It, uh, where I, I went, I, it was the Freshman 50. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I just deal with a lot of that stuff and just, just show them kind of better, different options um, out in the world there so they can uh, make better decisions on, on food and cooking and all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Hey, also, by the way, yeah, I might boil my ribs, or I don't boil my ribs, at least I said it, but uh, I also don't drink soda, Greg. Soda? Why not? Yeah. I just don't drink it. It's, Aren't you, it's, 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 the, you know, the people from the north say soda. It's, <laughs> it's like when, you, when I moved to Ohio from upstate New York, it went from right. soda to pop. I mean, what the hell is yeah, pop? Exactly, exactly. Pop's my dad. Yeah, it, it's so funny because uh, <laughs> I did a college, and I was talking about it, and, they said, and I said, well, what do you guys call it here? Because my buddy from Chicago calls it pop, and everybody <laughs> else calls it soda, and they call it Coke. Yeah. And I was like, well, what if you're having a Sprite? And they're like, you call it Coke. I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense at all. See, I mean, it, like barbecue, different regions of the country are porting out different regions of how you say stuff. I mean, it's all crazy, exactly. whacked out stuff. So, I mean, what can well, I tell you? And that's what's also great about everything. You know, it's like, it's like someone like, what, what are the four barbecue meccas? Te- Texas, Kansas City, Memphis, and uh, what, North Carolina? Right, Carolinas. Are those basically the four. And then, and then you have a couple, like, five and six areas that get all angry that they're not included, you know what I mean? But, you know, North Carolina barbecuers don't like Texas barbecue. You know what I mean? It's, it's, so, it's, it's such a great 
banter kind of thing going on that uh, it makes it makes it really exciting at least to watch, you know. Oh, absolutely, and that's uh, you know diversity and, and having different points of view is what it's all about. Obviously, yeah. uh, as you well know, unfortunately, when well, you say one <laughs> thing and people disagree with you, I say stuff on the show all the time, and I'm getting twenty, thirty, oh, forty emails oh, a week. Yeah, oh, yeah. Greg, I'm such a low man on this totem on this barbecue totem pole. You have no uh, no but, idea, my believe friend. Believe me, uh, I, I would, I'm looking up at you, Kevin. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm looking up at you, buddy. Oh, I, I appreciate. I appreciate. Hey, I'll tell you this right now, though. I'm I'm literally making dinner right now. What do you think I'm making? Let's see. We have a full rack of baby back ribs and beer. <laughs> In a big pot of water. That's right, man. No. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. All right, what do you got? What do you got? I am actually making a pan roasted king salmon Ooh. with a ginger garlic caper mustard sauce. That's very, it sounds very, uh, very involved. Well, there you go. So, 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 you know, I know some things. I don't know some things, you know? <laughs> hey, you, you, know, you obviously know cooking. You have restaurants. You have cookbooks out there. So, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, we can. I, I, do, I, I know a few, few things. Of course, you know what they say? If you stop learning about cooking and food, your ego's gone way too big. That's right. You know what I mean? It, it, it's always something to learn. It's always something to learn. So. I learned the hard way, my friend. <laughs> there you go. This is uh, Kevin Roberts. He's the host of the new season of Barbecue Pitmasters. That's season two. Kevin, I appreciate you taking time out. I know I kept you long tonight, but uh, appreciate oh, you for the insight not, and not uh, problem, for doing the Greg. show. Thank All you right. so much for having me. I right, really man. appreciate it. Take bye. care. Thanks for doing it. All right. Later, bud. There he is. Kevin Roberts. Thoughts? I think he uh, was forthcoming. I think he, <laughs> three seconds in, he owned it. I mean, talk about a preemptive strike of seismic and gargantuan proportions. I am not a barbecue master. What else you say? He owned it. That's all I ask. You come on, you own it. You made a mistake. What can I tell you? We ran long. I'm going to be looking for Derek Riches when we come back. It's the Barbecue Central Show right here on the Barbecue Central Radio Networks. Forget going from site to site to get all your barbecue and grilling supplies and make your first and final stop at fredsmusicandbarbecue.com. In the market for a new barbecue pit, we have all the big name brands like Big Green Egg and more. As a matter of fact, Fred's is staffed by eggheads and carries all the parts and accessories for the Big Green Egg. More of a pellet head, you say? Fred's is the pellet grill superstore with grills in stock from Traeger, Green Mountain, and country smokers from Louisiana Grills. Fred also carries smokers from Cook Shack, Bradley, and Weber as well, as well as a full lineup of charcoal grills. And once you're outfitted with your new smoker or grill, you'll find absolutely everything you need to make your barbecue or grilling experience a success. Fred is also the creator and distributor of Tasty Licks barbecue products, including their great line of rubs, spices, and sauces. you got to try them. You can also get your hands on a full lineup of marinades, accessories, lump charcoal, wood chips, pellets, chunks, and even the great grilling tools from Stephen Reichland of Barbecue U fame. Check Fred out on the web at fredsmusicandbbq.com or check out their fully stocked showroom in beautiful Shillington, PA. Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampey. 38 past the hour. Thanks again to Kevin Roberts for coming on. This portion of the show brought to you by the good folks over at Yokers. Yokers. Yoders. <laughs> Smoky Mountain Barbecue, the leading online distributor of Meadow Creek Barbecue Equipment. These barbecue smokers, pig roasters, chicken cookers, and grills are handcrafted in the Amish country of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and their goal is to give you outstanding value for the price, help you enjoy easy and profitable barbecues for years to come. They also carry a complete line of wonderful barbecue rubs and sauces. Check them out on the internet. Serious BBQs. BBQS. SeriousBBQs.com. All right. uh, Derek is on the clock. He is nowhere to be found on my Skypeness, so we'll have to uh, see what he comes up with. Uh, abbreviated segment, we will be uh, casting out here in maybe three or four minutes, so we can catch up on the clock. Here's what we were going to be talking about, Derek Riches. He had a new review on the Charbroil's new Patio Bistro Electric Grill, which was going to be a replacement for that Patio Caddy Grill. That was out, I believe it was like last summer or heading into fall. Maybe it was more towards football season as kind of a tailgate thing, if I remember correctly. Derek did review that piece of machinery on this show right here. He was also going to talk about the Woodmaster Pellet Grill. 
Uh, of course, another pellet grill. And it seems that once Traeger had lost the patent on uh, the auger system, these pellet grills are coming out of the woodwork now. This one is uh, not as expensive as some of the other ones, uh, but uh, Derek was going to be talking about the Woodmaster pellet grill. And then he had the Holland Grill Apex all on tap, which uh, we will probably push until maybe next week, maybe the week after that, or whenever I can get back with Derek. All right, so let's do this. Where do I have my... Mm. Seven minutes. Nah, that's going to be too much. All right. Well, look. Don't forget, coming up here, well, next segment, we have the four segment free for all hosted by your friend and mine, Harry Carey, post mortem, Hall of Fame baseball broadcaster. We have the El Captain Santa Maria style seasoning to give away, a barbecue hook, and Cosmos Q, as well as uh, other prizes, too. But those are the first three that are up and uh, going to be ready to go. So if you want to call in, 877-448-0433, bbqcentralradio at gmail.com is the email address if you want to weigh in on uh, the Kevin Roberts segment. Look, it's hard, and I don't know if a lot of people are expecting me to sit there and really bash him over how it went on the Today Show over Memorial Day weekend, as I had mentioned in the open. A lot of people were really taking shots at him, and did he give a lot of potentially bad information yeah was some of it misconstrued yes did i say that there was potential uh, that people didn't put some stuff together because of how quick the segment was moving or that he didn't make those correlations uh, during that segment yeah i mentioned that like a week a week and a half ago two weeks ago whatever the case was but look when when i start the interview and say how are you and he comes on immediately and says i'm no barbecue expert I mean, he's diffused the situation, not that I'm looking to Jerry Springer him or jump him and, and, and jump ugly, if you will. I believe that was a term that my uh, dad used, jump ugly. Um, here, here's a guy. I mean, he's, obviously, he, he didn't seem to be as over the top on the personality side. Obviously, look, when you, whether you're on a microphone, whether you're in front of a camera all day long, people have different personalities. I would have to imagine that when he gets the red light on, he gets a little bit more amped up or he has a persona or personality that he needs to uh, to act on because that's what the company has hired him to do, to, to be a certain way or to facilitate a show a certain way. Uh, just like here on this show, you would catch me outside of the Barbecue Central Radio Network compound and maybe I'm not as uh, I don't know, personable or I don't have the same sound in my voice or I'm not on, as they say. Uh, all the time. I mean, who would want to be married and have kids with somebody that sounded like this all the time? I mean, you got to be kidding me. So a lot of that is probably the same with any other type of personality, whether it be on radio or whether it be on television. You know, what you see in front of the camera isn't necessarily indicative of what they are like in real life, I would suppose. So let's go ahead and uh, take a call here for the next couple minutes. Uh, area code 901, name and where you're calling from. Melissa from Nesbitt, Mississippi. Hey, Melissa, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, just happens to be the Memphis Barbecue Network side champion there at the D.C. Barbecue Battle, so uh, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thank you for spending some time with uh, my embedded reporter down there. <laughs> oh, she's, she's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> it's my pleasure. All right, so uh, did, you, uh, did you happen to listen to the Kevin Roberts interview? I did, I did. All right, so what's your take on that, Melissa? I mean, you've been around the barbecue game quite a long time, and you know what people are like, especially on the television side. Do you think that he kind of came clean right off the bat? He did, and and this is the age-old battle. Um, what he was doing on the Today Show is grilling. What we do in competition is barbecuing, and, and you just can't confuse the two. And, you know, if you're grilling, say you're grilling, and get on with your grilling. Um, but don't confuse that with actual barbecuing. And grilling is great. You know, everybody loves to grill. You know, you got a big old fat steak or a pork chop, throw it on there and grill it. Is there a, do you but, think is it a standard practice where people boil stuff or, or parboil chicken or ribs, or is that something just to speed up the process? That's grilling. <laughs> and and you, you would never, ever parboil anything, uh, especially for competition. Uh, you know, restaurants do it simply because of, um, you know, they just don't have the capacity to create real barbecue. 
Um, people do it for, for ease, you know, because not everybody has five or six hours to spend babysitting ribs. Um, you know, and that's fine. Um, but it's, it's just not to be confused with barbecuing. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, there's two ways to do it. And one of the uh, one of the focuses of this show, at least up front, was to try and discern the fact that these terms are not interchangeable. Barbecue and grilling. You don't barbecue on a grill. You don't grill on a barbecue. These are two different methods of cooking and both should be embraced, but you shouldn't be using these terms willy nilly. Right. Exactly. Now let's uh, let's turn back real quick to your uh, to your uh, your win this past weekend. I mean, you've been riding a streak uh, of you you win the world champion last month in Memphis in May. You turn around and go to the nation's capital and uh, win that side. Were you a triple entry on the Memphis Barbecue Network side? Yes, sir. Now, do, all, all are, are, are a lot of the teams that are doing the MBN are they triple entries or are they just kind of banking on one meet? Um, well, in, in the D.C. barbecue battle, um, you know, I never got a breakdown of how many hogs and shoulders and ribs there were, and we, of course, we didn't get score sheets yet. So I don't know the Kansas City teams. I know a lot of them entered the Memphis in May uh, sanctioned event, but um, I don't know how many of them actually, you know, what categories they entered. So I don't know the breakdown on that. But, you know, there's a lot more crossover there than there is at most contests. Do you think there's ever? Do you think that there'll be more crossover competitions where you're doing both? Oh, I absolutely do. And for small teams, it's a nightmare um, because the turn-ins at dual contests, the turn-ins are every 30 minutes. Um, so you're turning in a Memphis product and a Kansas City product and a Memphis product and a Kansas City product. And um, you know, for small teams, it's almost impossible for us. Um, at Washington, they had the Kansas City sanctioned event on um, Saturday and the Memphis and May sanctioned event on Sunday. So that was made it a lot easier. Now, you've been working a plan of consistency, which obviously has led to a, a lot of the success that you have. And it hasn't obviously been just this year. I mean, it's been over a number of these past years. You know, you've had Team of the Year honors. You've uh, had category honors for Team of the Year at Memphis Barbecue Network. And it seems like whenever Jack's Old South enters into a competition, especially one like this that has a lot of uh, cachet and a lot of exposure. He's almost like the default person that everybody goes to to win. I didn't necessarily think that that would be the case. Uh, I absolutely thought that you guys had a better chance than Myron's team to go in and do that. Do you think that Yazoo's is getting the respect that it deserves, and do you think that winning Memphis in May and now winning DC Barbecue Battle is going to bolster that? Well, I hope so, um, but you know we're not um, we're not really walking and talking to respect battle. Um, you know we do what we do, we enjoy what we do, and you know we have been on a roll. We've um, won the last four contests we competed in, um, and we're just going to ride that pony as long as it'll ride. Why not, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right, uh, Melissa. Is there anything else you'd like to add before I uh, break out of here and we bring in Harry Carey? No, but I thought I'd save you since you're the caller didn't call me. Oh, well, you are delightful. And believe me, I, uh, more, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable that you would actually just go ahead and, and call out, especially uh, given the fact that the long weekend and the heat probably had to be one of the most uh, difficult week. Well, I mean, you're down there in Mississippi, so I mean, you know what the heat's all about. But I mean, it was pretty brutal out there, right? Yeah, and I'm getting older, and it's not getting any easier. <laughs> it never is. But uh, this is the Memphis Barbecue Network side over there at the D.C. Barbecue Battle. Grand champion Melissa Cookston just happened to drop in to pick me up because uh, Derek Richenrich has shined on me. But we'll never forget that. But thanks a lot, Melissa. I appreciate you calling in. Thanks, Greg. There she is. Check her out. Check her out picking up the Barbecue Central show. Grand champions calling in right and left. Okay, not right and left at all, just her. Where was Q out? Wait a second. Where was Q out? That's right. Out All right. That was awesome. Unsolicited call in from the grand champions of the Memphis Barbecue Network side of things at the DC Barbecue Battle, Melissa Cookston. We'll come back with the four segment free for all 877 448 0433. Call in now to win Barbecue Hooks, El Captain, Cosmos Q. Stand by. We'll be right back. Central Lights. You having marriage troubles? Your kids unruly and don't listen? Then you need the Ribolator because great barbecue will always bring the family together. And the Ribolator always cooks great award winning barbecue. You can try it free for 30 days. And if your family life doesn't improve, just send it back. Ribolator even pays return shipping. But you need to take that first step. Visit ribolator.com to get started or call 206 999 0962. 
Don't you deserve a happy barbecue family? Sometimes it's all about the free stuff. Call now to win something succulent. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, 10 till. This portion of the show brought to you by the good folks at the Barbecue Guru, makers of automatic temperature control devices, not to mention a host of other products that make your barbecue and grilling life easier. Two ways to find them. On the internet, thebbqguru.com. You can also look them up. Well, not look them up. You can call them on the phone, 800-288-GURU. It's good folks, the Barbecue Guru. All right, let's go ahead and rush over and play the four-segment free-for-all. Hi, everybody. Harry Carey here. Hi. It's Tuesday. It's time to play. Okay. All right, here's how it's going to go. I'm going to ask you uh, three questions, barbecue or not barbecue. And you have five seconds to answer each question. It's very simple. Let's race to the phones. We only have a few minutes to do this tonight. We ran late. Area code 913. David, where are you calling from? Hey, Harry. This is Dave in Kansas City. Hey, Dave. How are you? How are you doing, Harry? I'm fine. How are you? I'm great. Okay, Dave, you want to play? You betcha. All right, Dave, do you want barbecue questions or not barbecue questions? Uh, let's go barbecue questions. All right, Dave, question number one. Name my first guest tonight. Uh, Kevin Roberts. That's right, the food dude, Kevin Roberts. Okay, question number two, Dave. What TV show is Kevin Roberts hosting this season? Uh, season two of Barbecue Pitmasters. That's right, Dave, you're very smart. I'm very impressed with you. All right, question number three. If you get this one right, you get a prize. Are you excited, Dave? Oh, I'm very excited, Eric. Well, I know I am. Okay, Dave, here's a third question. What's the finishing internal temperature for chicken? 165. All right. I thought I was going to get you on that one, Dave. You're smart as a rock, I'm telling you. It's outrageous. All right. Okay, All Dave, right. we have something to pick from. You can have a barbecue hook. You can have El Captain Santa Maria style seasoning, or you can have Cosmos Q. Which one would you like? Um, since I already have a barbecue hook, I'll take the Cosmos Q. Cosmos Q it is, Dave. Thanks for calling in tonight. All right, thanks a lot, Harry. Appreciate it. All right, email me your info, bbqcentralradio@gmail.com. Harry code nine one two. David, where you're calling from? Mark, Savannah, Georgia. Hi, Mark. How are you? Great, how's it going? I'm fine, how are you? I'm great. All right, Mark, do you want to play the game? I do. Okay, Mark, do you want barbecue questions or not barbecue questions? Barbecue. Mark, let me ask you a question. We've played this game for eight huh? weeks. How come nobody picks not barbecue questions? I don't get it. <laughs> I might not be alive, but I'm not very smart either. Okay, that was a good yeah, answer, Mark. Okay, Mark, let's get ready to play the game. Are you ready? Ready. Name my first guest tonight. Kevin Roberts. That's right, Kevin Roberts. Okay, Mark, question number two. Get your thinking cap on. This is going to be tough. Name the show that Kevin Roberts is hosting this season. Barbecue Pitmasters Season 2. That's right. Mark, you must be a smart guy. What's your IQ? I don't know yet. I don't don't know either. Who cares? Let's have another beer. Okay. Mark, third question. You answer this one right, you get a prize. Are you excited? I am. I know I am. Okay, Mark, here's your last question. Name the finished internal temperature for chicken. 165. That's right. Mark, you're smart just like the last guy. He was Dave. Dave was smart, too. All right, here's what we got left. We got a barbecue hook, or we got El Captain, Santa Maria-style seasoning. It's fantastic. I'm going to take those hooks. All right. Hooks it is, Mark. Go ahead and email me your shipping info at bbqcentralradio@gmail.com. at gmail.com. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks for calling in tonight, Mark. Beat it. Outrageous. We've had we're two for two. Boy, I'm sure glad people know what the finished uh, temperature of chicken is. It's somewhere along the line they've changed that. It used to be two different temperatures. I never get it. I don't understand I thought it used to be 180 degrees in the thigh and in the leg. And 165, 
in the breast. Oh, I feel so dirty when I say that. I don't get it. Did the chicken experts decide that it's okay to just have one uniform finished internal temperature on the meat? I don't know. Let's ask this guy. Area code 775. Radio show, uh, who's this? This is Tony from Carson City, Nevada. Hi, Tony. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? All right. All right, Tony. You want to play? We have only a few minutes left. Yeah, I'm ready. Barbecue questions, I assume? Oh, barbecue questions, definitely. All right, kid. Here we go. Tony, name my first guest tonight. That was Kevin from uh, Barbecue Pitmaster. That's right, Kevin Roberts. I'll give it to you. All right, Tony, second question. Name the show that Kevin is hosting this season. Uh, Barbecue Pitmaster. Season two. <laughs> That's right, season two. All right. Last question, Tony. Put your thinking cap on because this could be a tough one. I think I might stump you with this one. I spent all last week okay. trying to come up with this question. Are you excited to win a prize? Oh, absolutely. I know I am. Okay, Tony, here's the final question. Name the finished internal temperature for chicken. Uh, 165 degrees of boiling water. Oh, boiling water. Oh, my. <laughs> hey, Tony, save the jokes for the professionals. Okay, Tony, you win a prize. There's okay. only one prize left, which is the El Captain right. Santa Maria-style seasoning. Let me tell you, it's super succulent. I love it. I bet you it's succulent, and I would love it. All right. So uh, this is all you need to do, Tony. Email me your shipping info, and we'll get it taken care of. BBQCentralRadio at gmail.com. All right. Thank you, sir. Thanks for calling in tonight, Tony. Beat it. And that's going to do it for me tonight. We got to go. There he goes. Harry Carey. He ran out saying three for three tonight. Three for three. All right. I don't know what that means. But we'll take care of it. I'll talk to him later after he's uh, passed out. Thanks to my guests. Second segment, Kevin Roberts. Basically saying he's not a barbecue expert. He owned it. Love that. Thanks to Melissa Cookston for bailing my ass out. In the third segment, we'll look for uh, Derek Riches again here next week or the week after, whenever he can fit it in. Hey, this thing's happened. Also, thanks to uh, the people that called in for the four-segment free-for-all. I was chilling out, taking my four-segment break, gearing up for After Dark, which will feature Ted Reader coming up. Also, Kelly Dodd doing the um, Barbecue Battle Breakdown Recap. So stay tuned for that. The future of barbecue is already here at thebarbecueguru.com. From the amazing guru that monitors and controls the temperatures of any charcoal, wood, or electric pit to the Caldera Tallboy Knockdown Smoker. Yes, it breaks down and stores flat, yet it's still a robust, sturdy, portable cooker and smokehouse. It also serves as an efficient temperature-controlled convection oven using wood or charcoal. The Tallboy is designed to fit all catering pans and can be used as a warming oven. You can cook in any style you choose, like ribs, chicken, jerky, vegetables, smoked cheese, whatever you want. Take it to KCBS competitions and unload it from the truck of your car. The BarbecueGuru.com is where you'll find the Caldera 3-Bay Caterer. It's stainless steel and uses charcoal or sterno for chafing purposes. And it doubles as a three-bay sink or wash station with hot water and knocks down in seconds with no tools required for transportation and storage. The future of barbecue is here at thebarbecueguru.com. That's www.thebbqguru.com. Or call 1-800-288-GURU. Introducing Cosmos Q. Cosmos injections and marinades use only the finest ingredients, and they mix easily, never clotting or caking. From our beef injection to our pork injection, you're guaranteed to wow your friends, family, and judges. And don't forget to check out our newest marinade, Cosmos Chicken Soak, for that moist and tender chicken you're gonna love. You can find all of Cosmos award-winning products at CosmosQ.com. Cosmos Q, the new generation. Taste the difference.